just like shooting pool. Nobody cares how you bridge your pool cue with your opposite hand, as long as you're comfortable. Same thing with welding. You want to brace and support the gun with the opposite hand in a manner that is comfortable for you. So, personal preferences is just the way that you feel comfortable holding the gun. Now, back to recommendations. A couple of things about holding the gun. What not to do. This is going to change depending on the position that you're in or what weld you're gonna be doing, but a couple of things that you don't wanna do. First and foremost, don't stack your hands. Not good, especially for beginners. If you stack your hands like this, you have your lid up, and then you go down like this, you're gonna depress the trigger with your lid up. Obviously, that's gonna flash you, and then you're gonna be blind for about 50 seconds, and it's also dangerous because you can get spatter in your face. So that's not good. Another thing about stacking your hands is, when you stack your hands and you're going through the weld, you can actually roll your hands. It sets up a pivot point, so then you're going fishing, okay? Another thing, when you're holding it like this, this isn't bracing and supporting. What this is, is just hovering. You're just floating it. Now, later on, you're gonna, have to, you're gonna be in certain situations where you are gonna have to float the gun, but for right now, what you wanna do is you wanna build up some muscle memory. You wanna get comfortable with holding uh, your gun rigidly. All right, now, another thing. What you wanna do is between the front of the trigger up to the bend in the neck. This is where I recommend holding it. What I like to do, I pinch the front of the gun body like so. I chop down on my material or uh, onto the table. I set up my rules, okay? Set up the rules, get your contact to work distance correct, your work angle correct, and then lock your hands in. Just make them a little tense. So as you are sliding the heel of your hand across the table or your workpiece, you basically stay in those positions the entire time you're moving. Next thing, your elbow. Don't put it down. This is kind of sets you up to be what's called a two inch welder. A two inch welder means that if you're doing straight toward the body draws like so, what's gonna happen, you're setting up a pivot point. So you're gonna have to walk back with your elbow as you slide your hand. Not good, it doesn't make you any more consistent. Now, if you're doing cross body, like so, it sets you up as an anchor. So if you're pushing or pulling, you're putting your elbow down, adding weight. You just wanna rest your hand down, like so, and just pull, like, nice and gently. Okay, trying to keep your hands in those positions to keep your rules in play. Last thing, vision, very important. When you are looking down the barrel of the gun, it does not work in welding. You want to see underneath your nozzle. You wanna see your arc. You wanna see your, your path, your line. And then if you can see your puddle when you first start, that's golden, you're ahead of the curve. That's great. So get your head off to the side and look under. You wanna look under and off to the side. So right here. Now, pull your elbow into your rib cage, and that allows you to get closer and more under your nozzle. I like to see it a little from the back. Some people that are tall might be a little from the front. As long as you can see your weld path and your weld while you are welding, that's great. You wanna be able to see your puddle in the end because it's all about puddle control.